Hi class, in this video what I want to do is I want to show you how to use Microsoft Excel uh, in some parts of your later modules and later sections in module one, specifically sections 1.5 to 1.10. And this lecture here isn't meant to be exhaustive in the sense that everything I show you is going to, covers all the concepts of these lectures. That's not the case. What I just want to do is just show you real briefly how to use some of the more common features in Excel that will help you as you work through the uh, lecture. So what I will also attach to where this video is located is I will attach the Microsoft Excel sheet blank in case you wanted to practice and then I'll also attach the Excel sheet with my work so you can see how it's done. Okay, so anyways, in, se in, in section 1.5 here, what the, what the module here talks about in this section is um, measures of uh, central tendency. Um, so what we think to talk about here are things like mean, median, and mode, okay? And what I wanted to do here was I wanted to replicate um, part of the challenge problem that you might see in this section, okay? So you're given this data set, and what it does is it has lists all the states and then a bunch of different information about it. The average FICO score for, for homeowners in that state, uh, the median home value, the average outstanding mortgage amount, the difference between value and mortgage balance, like the value of the home and the mortgage balance, the median household income, and then a region that the, that the state is located in. Okay, so the first question says, what is the median average FICO score for all 50 states? Okay, so to do this in Excel, if you wanna have Excel do something for you, a calculation for you, you always start with an equal sign. And then the command to find the median is just median. You type in median, and then you start a set of parentheses. Now you want the average FICO score for all 50 states. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the first one here and I'm gonna scroll all the way down and I'm gonna hold my shift key and it'll and then select down at the end with Wyoming. So you could do it that way, all right? Another way you could do it is you could literally select the first one and then holding your mouse down, you can drag down until you get to Wyoming here and that's totally fine as well. And then all I'm gonna do is close the parentheses and the median of that data set right there is the median, the, the median average FICO score, no, that sounds weird, is 709, okay? The next question, you have to be careful as you work through these on the textbook, the, the, the wording of it. What is the mean for the median household income? Okay, and then you have to be careful, in the Midwest, okay? So this is the Midwest region here, all right? So I'm just gonna highlight it just so you can, you can see we're only we're only talking about states in the Midwest. So what is the mean median household income? So you got to find that. That's this this column right here. So to find the mean, you do equal and it's average. Okay, it's the word average here. Start a parentheses. Then just make sure you select the home values or the the median household income in just the Midwest for this. Then you're going to close your parentheses and hit enter. And that's your average here. You'll notice that there's this little error thing here. And the reason it is, is because it's like, oh, did you mean to stop here? Um, did you want to include these adjacent cells? And, and no, we don't want to include the adjacent cells. So we don't need that there. And there you go. That's that's how you find those two right there. When we next move into, mo into section 1.6, or module 1.6, if you want to call it that, is... Um, uh, this talks about measures of dispersion or measures of spread for the data, okay? And one of the common things here is um, a standard deviation, okay? And what a standard deviation is, is just the average deviation from the mean for your data values, all right? So the first question here says, what is the standard deviation, okay, of the median home values of states in the Northeast? So median home value is right here. And I just want homes in the Northeast. So I only want to concentrate on the Northeast here, okay? So now there's two types of standard deviations, okay? There's a population and there's a sample. Now this would be a population standard deviation because I have the complete set of data here, okay? I have all the states in the Northeast. It's not a sample, okay? So you're gonna go equals and then standard deviation, you start with STDEV and then notice how there's a dot P and dot S. You want dot P, okay, for a population. You're gonna start your set of parentheses, okay? And then you want it for the median home value. So you're just gonna select only the states in the Northeast, 
only the states in the Northeast. Then you're going to close the set of parentheses. And this is our standard deviation here. And you can get it so there's no decimal points if you want, just like this. Or you can expand and have decimal points if you want. Okay, next it says, what is the standard deviation for the median home value in all 50 states? So we want now all 50. So it's equal stdev.p, standard deviation for a population, parentheses, and I want all 50. So I want to go down and then hold the shift key so I get all of them, like this. Then you're going to close the parentheses, and there you go. So you can see the difference here, okay? When you've got the whole state, it just looks like the data, the larger standard deviation implies the data is more spread out. That's all we're seeing here. Okay, so use Excel when you can, right? The doing this stuff by hand uh, is not fun. So um, Excel does it for you rather quickly and practice will make perfect on this. All right, let's go to section 1.7 here. All right, and this has to deal with quartiles. Um, so quartiles, you got to think about like quarters, right? So the first quartile is the data value for which 25% falls below. The second quartile, which is also called the median, um, is for which 50% of data is below. And the third quartile, you know, what that means is 75% of data is below it or 25% is above it. Now, what's weird here is Excel has two options. They have what's called an exclusive and an inclusive um, uh, quartile system. We want to make sure we have the inclusive. All right, so you have this data set and it's ordered, okay? So what is the first quartile? So we're gonna select equals and then you see how it says quartile here? So we're gonna type quartile and then we want the inclusive. So we want the dot inc, we want the inclusive. So what you're gonna notice here is gonna want two things. The first thing it's gonna want is the array of data. So we're gonna select all our data and then we're gonna hit comma and then it says, well, what quartile do you want? Well, notice here, it, it, it gives you a hint here. Do you want, if you put zero, it'll be the minimum value. If you put one next, that'll be the first quartile. So I'm going to press one, close the parentheses, and there you go. That is the first quartile. What is the median? Well, we know that. That's median is equal to, and then select this, just like that. The median is also the second quartile, okay? So what is the third quartile? So it's quartile. And then make sure you hit dot inc for inclusive parentheses. And then you're going to select the data, comma. Now we want the third quartile. So we're going to press the number three and close the parentheses, just like that. All right, create a box plot for the data now. This is great. So what you're going to do is you're going to select the data. You're going to highlight the data you want to create the box plot for. Then in Excel, you're going to go up and hit insert. And then there's, there's a bunch of things you can hit. I, hopefully you see this thing called recommended charts here, okay? So I'm gonna click on recommended charts. I'm gonna scroll over to all charts. And you see this thing called the box and whisker plot? You're gonna click that. And you're gonna hit enter. And it plops it right there for you. One of the things that you're going to, um, gonna have to, to, to mess with a little bit here is um, the quartiles, if you notice, like the third quartile is 38.5, but here it says it's 40. That's because they're doing the exclusive. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on the box plot. You're gonna hit format data series and just change to inclusive median. Boom, right like that. And it'll automatically change it for you. And there you go, it'll show the correct quartiles for you, all right? So then you can change the chart title or you can delete the chart title if you want and it'll automatically move it in for you there. Okay, so you can see the minimum value. The first quartile is this next bar. This is the median. This is the third quartile. And this is the uh, maximum value. Next, we're gonna talk about uh, in, in section 1.8 or module 1.8, we're gonna have um, histograms. So I just took the same set of data and what you're going to do to do the histogram is you're going to insert the same way you did. So you're going to select the data. You're going to select insert. You're going to go to recommended charts and you want the option called histogram. Okay, and it should look like this. And notice what this said here. 
was this said create a histogram with five bins. So it looks like here there's only one, two, three. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click on the um, format axis and it brings up this option right here. So you're going to change the number of bins to five and you should see something that looks like this. Next it says construct a histogram with a width, a little bit of a typo, with a width of 12.5. So you're going to select the data, you're going to go insert, recommended charts, you're going to go to histogram, you're going to insert the histogram. Now what you're going to have to do now though is you're going to have to right click on the axis and just change it to the number of bins, or the, excuse me, the bin width to be 12.5. And this is what your histogram looks like. So it's really great that Excel does this for you really, really quickly. All right, in module 1.9, they talk about a line graph, which is uh, sometimes referred to as a time series graph. Okay, so what it does is it shows a relationship between two variables or a trend line. And, and generally, when you want to see a trend line, you, you look at date or time as the as the trend. So like what's happening is the value increasing or decreasing over time. So here I have some dates, all right, a number of years ago in the Apple stock on that date. So if you wanted to um, put in the uh, trend graph of this, all right, the line graph, what you could do is you could select all the data. You can even select the headers for this stuff in Excel if you want. And you're going to go insert. And you're going to go recommended chart. And you can see that it does it for you right here like this. But if you go to all charts, what this is, is this is also referred to as a scatter plot will show this. So scatter, insert, and you can see it looks a little bit like this. Now, what you wanna do is you might wanna format the axis so, that, so it looks a little bit better. So notice how it starts at zero, but our lowest value is like 96. So I'm gonna right click on this axis Go to format axis and the minimum value I'm just going to change to let's say 90. And you can see it just blows the graph up a little bit. Notice how this here is a little crook, little like on top of each other here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna format this axis here. And you can you can mess around with this um, and, and and format this any way you want, like with a custom angle. If you, you notice how I start doing this it tilts sideways and it becomes a little bit easier to see here. And that's just another way you, you can see the trend for the stock price. And like the trend is over this time period is that it's going down, like it's decreasing over time. And then the last section in section 1.10 or module 10 has to deal with bar charts. And so just to go back, like histograms are generally used when you have uh, quantitative data and bar charts are generally used when you have qualitative data. So here what I have is I have, um, I'm a football fan, so what I have here is I have the New York teams, because I'm originally from New York, even though I live currently in New Jersey. Uh, and I have the teams, okay? Uh, New York Jets, New York Giants, Buffalo Bills, and, and none. And, it's, and I wanna know the proportion of people who in that state who support those teams, okay? And I just wanna show the bar chart of it. So what you can do is you can select the data like this, Go insert, recommended charts, and you can see right here where it says bar. You know, you can insert just like this. And then you can fool around with the layout up here if you want. Uh, you can change the layout so that it, it looks like it's vertical or horizontal instead. Um, and, you know, that's really it. So if you have any questions about using Microsoft Excel for any of this, I'm happy to help. Um, it can be a little confusing at, at first, um, but I promise you the more you work with it, the easier it will get. And um, you know, stick with it as you continue to go through the mod module. And if you have any questions, you can either email me or post to the uh, general questions form.